Everybody knows who watches this show with me. We love a good laugh, right? Well, we haven't had a wave, have we? Nice to see you. Thank you as ever for joining me. But truly, laughter is the best medicine, isn't it? It really is the thing that cheers us all up. And I know many of us love the old style comedies like Dick Emery, It Ain't Half Hot Mum, Are You Being Served? There's so many, isn't there? And it was the golden era of comedy when you think, because yes, you could be slightly offended, like mind your language, but it wasn't done with malicious intent. Now, when you think about it today, I don't know about you, I feel that like we're not allowed to laugh at anything. Well, you're laughing at me now, aren't you? Of course, but I understand that, <laughs> yes. But on a serious note, you know what I'm saying? You're not really, because everybody's offended by literally everything. If you're doing comedy now, stand up, I do feel sorry for people because somebody somewhere in the audience will say, oh, you were rude about a wicker basket, and suddenly that becomes a problem. This is now the problem for one of the longest, well, running and very successful BBC TV comedy shows. We're talking about the brilliant Mrs. Brown's Boys. But the BBC actually are being very clever at how they're trying to get you to switch off from the only comedy that pulls in millions of viewers every time it comes back on screen. Let me explain. Morning, good to see you. Thank you as ever for joining me and as ever thank you for supporting the channel and also for enjoying so many of the videos. Glad to have your company. Now let me explain this very quickly because as you know, if you don't know this particular show, Mrs. Brown's Boys was conceived way back in the early 90s by the brilliant comedian Brendan O'Carroll and a very clever man, you know, no two ways about it. Took a long time for success to come, but when it did, bang. And this became a massive show originally at the beautiful Glasgow Pavilion. And basically he went along with the idea, the manager liked it and said, let's give it a go. It wasn't a success. It became a success. And here's the key factor. When tickets became two for one, suddenly it starts to sell out. And over several years, Brendan O'Carroll and his family of characters were a mega success. So much so finally, after hitting it big on Irish TV, the BBC decided, well, to put it on. Now, amazingly, there's actually a controller of comedy at the BBC, not that you'd know it. But now this particular show is, well, engulfed in another disaster. This is because, according to the audience that was sat there during a recording, Brendan O'Carroll made something of a racist slur. He didn't. In fact, he never said anything, but apparently he implied it. Now, this is... After the debacle of Strictly Come Dancing and Amanda Abington, and of course the MasterChef guy, Greg Wallace, everybody's in a scandal, right? Everybody's offended, but the BBC are having an investigation. An investigation because it was funny, that's the problem. But the true story is this, nobody at the BBC likes the show, but it sells around the world, making a colossal amount of money for the corporation. So while they'd love to bin it and say, oh, it's terrible, not representative at all of what we want, the few remaining viewers that the BBC has watching BBC One, headed by the controller Charlotte Moore, well, they have to do something. They have to appease the mass. So for now, Mrs. Brown's Boys remains on the channel. But the bigger problem now for Brendan O'Carroll and the rest of them, even though it's resulted in sellout tours, a mega smash movie, and continual rating success for the BBC, they know, the public know, and the BBC know, that eventually they're going to try and squeeze it out this is all because you like to laugh. Remember, many people might suggest, you pay your BBC TV license fee for things that you want to watch. But as ever with the BBC, they're telling you this isn't funny. But millions of people tuning in every week are saying differently. And that's something not to laugh about for the BBC. Neil Shaw in the very heart of London.